A pair of dancing feet, the greatest feminine tap dancer of them all. The little Irish girl who hoofed her way to stardom from the sidewalks of New York, Ruby Keeler. Ziegfeld star and then movie star and now teacher. But today it's all in the family, Ruby's dancing family. 11-year-old Ruby Keeler, a niece. Margaret Newman, nine, another niece. Ruby's six-year-old daughter, Teresa, and Chrissy, her five-year-old daughter. Joe Virus, seven, a nephew, another niece, three-year-old Francis Newman. A famous dancing family. Ten years ago, Ruby Keeler retired from the screen to become Mrs. John Lowe and the mother of four children. But now it's a comeback, both as a star and as a teacher, at the White and Manning Ruby Keeler Dance Studio in San Fernando Valley, California. And as a hobby, backyard instruction for the whole Keeler family and a close eye on six pairs of tiny dancing feet. But Joe Vira got his signals crossed. Ruby signaled for routine number two. Joe got confused. This footwork can be complicated, but with a teacher like the famous Ruby, things get straightened out, and even the kids reflect the precision she made famous on the stage and on the screen. Here's Ruby's brother, Bill Keeler, who reminds Ruby that one of her students played hooky. It's Ruby's son, four-year-old Johnny. Bill explains that he found Johnny out playing cowboy and Indians. Johnny likes to dance, yes, but gosh, Ma, those Indians might have scalped the whole family. Ruby understands and Johnny figures he can let the Indians wait a few minutes while he shows his mother and his Uncle Bill that he can hoof right along with them. And there's a picture for you, like mother, like uncle, like son, a dancing family, starring the one and only Ruby Keeler. Introducing Hollywood's number one Western stuntman, Cal Perry, and his Arabian horse, Warrior. Stuntman Perry is a wizard at riding, roping, gun twirling, and handling a bullwhip. This is an American bullwhip, 12 feet long, a weapon with the lethal power of a coiled-up rattlesnake. A demonstration in accuracy with Cal behind the whip on Warrior. His father, a former Rodeo star Ben Petty, holding the target, a rolled up piece of newspaper. A fast gallop to the target, a quick dismount, and Cal's bullwhip gets ready for action. A flick of Cal's wrist and the whip cracks through the air with an ominous sound and deadly accuracy. Ben isn't worried. He knows that his son could make that whip do everything except read dialogue. This time, Cal will cut the paper as he rides past on his horse, a really difficult trick which he's performed many times on the screen. Bull whips are difficult to handle, but Cal has mastered them for his role as a movie stunt man. Yes, sir, cut like a razor. But these movie stunt men always want to make things tougher for themselves. Ben will hold the paper between his teeth this time as Cal attempts to cut the paper. Brother, if Cal misses this time, Papa will be minus a nose or maybe an ear. Oh, a uh, miss. Well, we'll try it again. Another target and Warrior starts another fast run. Cal was nervous about Papa the first time, but this is it. Cal's bullwhip makes a bull's eye. Nice going, Cal. Cal and Warrior can take a bow. So can Papa. Now, a scene right out of a Western movie. The villain peeking out of a barn door. The hero rides in to save the mortgage on Grandpappy's ranch. A gun versus a bullwhip, and this time you can bet on the bullwhip. No, I didn't read the script. I just know that Cal Perry's whip talks a very convincing language. No argument about it unless the villain doesn't mind losing a couple of fingers or even his whole hand. The hat designing genius of Hollywood's Kenneth Hopkins. The model, Vivian Dubois. The hat, well, Kenneth calls it United Nations. It's a wide brim Swiss braid, Chinese coolie style with a French ribbon and American veiling. A perennial favorite worn by Barbara Freaking, a mauve pink straw sailor. The brim is covered with pink violet and wisteria colored lilacs a pink veil, and an emerald velvet ribbon. The lowly beanie goes glamorous on Kenneth Hopkins' drawing board. The result, Jerry Cameron shows a two-way kalo with those white lilacs taking the place of bangs. It's reversible. Put the flowers in the back and hide the shingle neckline. 
Vivian Dubois again in a white felt palette profile which Hopkins calls on the level, tailored with a shawl veil of felt. The veiling is bound with a new shade of California coral. Candy straw in pale yellow with a seashell silhouette. Again, the bustle back with red geraniums and red velvet binding. No wonder the ladies call Hopkins Mr. Genius. The new forward look in a novelty straw woven in brown and white for texture. Ideal, says Hopkins, for shopping. And now I'll make a fashion prediction. There will be little change in men's pockets. Sherman Oaks, 10 minutes from Hollywood, trout fishing next to a restaurant where they fry your fish. A waterfall in the forest primeval surrounded by busy boulevards. But it's still Hollywood and that calls for two pretty maids and a good excuse for bathing suits on a fishing expedition. Cheesecake in rubber boots, glamour in the wilds of Hollywood. This is lovely starlet Jill Richards. This is lovely starlet Melissa McClure. Jill and Melissa are out today to prove that there are fish who will bite on salmon egg bait in Hollywood trout lakes, even if the fish have to be hauled in by trucks from a trout farm 45 miles away. But we can't call them poor fish when a couple of attractive young ladies like Jill and Melissa put a lure like this behind a fishing pole. Say, this is enough to make the fish leap out of the water, roll over, and say, what's cooking? but you can stop frowning because it's a beauty, the fish and the girl. Yes, this is fishing, the likes of which could only happen in Hollywood. The lakes are man-made just a few steps off of busy Ventura Boulevard in the heart of bustling San Fernando Valley. In fact, you can even hear the roar of automobile traffic as you fish. The fish are raised on a California trout farm and average about eight inches in length. The charge is 35 cents for the small fry and 75 cents for the big ones. The enterprising owner provides his fishing addicts with a rod and reel and the salmon egg bait. And just to be sure you make a catch, the fish are kept hungry and people sometimes are surprised to discover that they can land a fish without even baiting their hook. Oh, so you're not listening to me. Okay. Well, Melissa McClure and Jill Richards are very attractive. But, you see, I thought you might be interested in Hollywood's idea of a fishing expedition. With fish on the table ten minutes later. A quiet Los Angeles street. A famous father and his daughter. Mickey Walker, the famous prize fighter, and his daughter, 20-year-old Pat. Mickey is telling Pat his life story for a book titled The Toy Bulldog. The story of an Irishman born with a black eye who eventually won four world titles. Now Mickey Walker remembers when as Pat puts down the story. But remembering can be difficult and sometimes there's a family argument about just what did happen. But that's what you told me, Pop. Sorry, Mickey says she's wrong. Pat has the notes, but Mickey has the story. You see, it happened like this. The bell rang for the third round and... The details of Mickey's fight with Harry Greb, one of the greatest fights in ring history. Greb won, but Mickey knocked him out four hours later in front of a Broadway nightclub. Pat gives up. If Mickey can't put it in words, he'll have to put it in action. Mickey accepts Pat's challenge to prove whether he's right. Good-natured fisticuffs, proof that the daughter of the famous Mickey Walker knows how to use boxing gloves, too. Walker versus Walker and round one. Pat comes out swinging. See, Pop, this is how you told me it happened. No, honey, this is how it happened. The bell rang for the third round and I closed in for a long, hard right and, oh, no, wow, this girl isn't kidding when she decides to prove a literary point in her father's biography. Keep slugging and we'll get this straightened out. After all, it's important. Pat's book about her father also is the basis for a motion picture with the same title, The Toy Bulldog. The facts must be correct. People were amazed that Mickey's daughter was able to feel the story of a prize fighter, but as Mickey says, she has an instinct for fighting. She sat there typing and ducking. And now it's Mickey's turn to duck. Oh, no, that one was right on the button. Mickey Walker goes down for the ten count. Come on, Pop, stand up and fight. 
I think Mickey has had enough. The argument is over. Pat wins the decision. And to make the victory complete, hands him a pansy. Mickey Walker down from the count in a pansy bed. Brother, the gang will be kidding him for the rest of his life. But it's all in the family, and I don't recommend that anyone else should try this. <laughs>